Before we talk about open installment loans and finish out 10-4, we're going to talk about a major fixed installment loan, a mortgage. Um, student loans are also kind of lumped in here, but they're, they're really straightforward compared to mortgages. Student loans are much more like a car loan, it's just that they're long term typically. Mortgages, if you have not bought a house, this is going to be a whole new world for you with a lot of new terms and uh, you want to make sure that you have the vocabulary down and understand kind of how things work because there are a lot of pieces and a lot of steps in calculating whether or not you qualify for the mortgage, how much the mortgage is going to be, um, and then how much of each payment is applied to principal and how much is applied to interest. Let's start by defining a mortgage. A mortgage is a long-term loan typically 30 years, sometimes 40, sometimes 15 or 20, in which property is security for the payment. The payment of the difference between the down payment and the sale price. Okay, um, just like with a car loan, the car is security for payment. If you don't pay your car payment, they come and take your car from you. With a mortgage, the house or the land is the security for the payment. Typically with a mortgage, there is a down payment. And we talked about down payment with cars. So now this is my and sign. So um, you know what a down payment is. If I'm paying money down, I'm not borrowing that money. So that amount is not part of the loan. That amount is subtracted from the sale price and the result is the amount that I'm being loaned. There are two basic types of mortgages a conventional loan and a variable or adjusted rate loan. We're going to focus on conventional loans. A conventional loan has a fixed interest rate. This means that your principal and interest payment is not going to change over the life of the loan. If it's a 30-year mortgage, you expect the same principal and interest payment the first year through the 30th year until the, the loan is paid off. Now, that being said, your, your homeowner's insurance and taxes could change, and that could make your house payment go up or down because we typically include those values in our monthly house payment but the principal and interest part will not change because the interest rate is fixed. On a variable or adjustable rate loan, that interest rate can change every period. The interest rate can change every period. And depending on your loan, a period is five to seven years. Let's see, a period is five to seven years. <coughs> now, a variable or adjustable rate loan is, is intriguing and, and looks good to people because it usually starts with a lower interest rate. The problem is it's less predictable. So you may be able to get a better uh, interest rate on your loan if you're looking at, and I'm just going to make these numbers up. Let's say that you can get a conventional loan with 5% interest, or you can get a variable rate loan with 4.5% interest. Well, when you're talking about enough money to buy a house, that half a percent is, is really looks good. It can mean thousands of dollars over the life of the loan. So you might say, okay, yes, I'm going to take this variable loan with a lower interest rate. But when the first period is up, somewhere between five to seven years, they, they revalue your loan and they look at the, how the interest rates are at that time. And if interest rates are really high right then, your interest rate for your mortgage is going to change. Now, if they're low, that's good because your, your interest rate could go down, but it could also go up 
And this could make a significant difference in the amount that you're being expected to pay every month. So if you are already setting your mortgage payment for kind of the max that you can afford, this can be dangerous because you can end up with a payment that you're not able to handle and it could, it could put your house in jeopardy. So a fixed interest rate loan is, is, you can tell that I'm not a risk taker, right? So I'm a big fan of fixed interest loans because I know what is expected of me over the life of the loan and I don't have to worry when that period is up whether or not my payment is gonna go up. Okay, let's go back to some other vocabulary. You already know down payment. Down payment is a percent of the purchase price that you pay to the seller at closing. A percentage of the purchase price and it's payable to the seller at closing. Now what is closing? If you've never bought a house, you've never experienced the joy of closing on that house. When you go to closing, that is where you sign all the papers. And I do mean all the papers. It takes forever. You sign your name about 30 times or more. Um, when you go to closing, you may bring, you will probably bring money for different people. Now, you, you're not going to bring be handing over cash. You're going to be bringing cashier's checks if that has not already taken place. But... Um, the seller is the person who is selling the house to you. If you're making a down payment, meaning that maybe the bank required you to pay 10% down or 15% down, that's off the sell price of the house, you're going to bring that money in form of a, of a cashier's check or something like that and give it to the seller or the seller's agent at closing. So this is not money that you borrow. This is money you are expected to have on hand and it goes to the seller, not the person, not the bank that's financing the mortgage. Okay, points. Points are a form of interest. Points are interest that is prepaid by the buyer and this goes to the bank or to whoever is financing your mortgage at the time of closing. You pay points to reduce your interest rate so that you get a lower interest rate over the life of the loan. And points are calculated where one point is equal to 1% of the principal that's being loaned. So not 1% of the price of the house, but 1% of the amount that you are borrowing. Now, um, my husband was military, and so we had a VA loan, and we didn't have to make a down payment or buy points when we purchased our homes. Um, but as I understand it, for example, they might offer you a 6% interest rate or you could buy two points of interest. So basically you're saying, okay, here is money interest paid right now. I'm not going to pay it out. I'm going to give it to you right now. I'm going to give you 2% of the sale or the, of the amount I'm asking to borrow in order to get a lower interest rate for my loan. So instead of 6% interest rate, I'm getting a 4% interest rate and I'm giving you some money right now. So that interest goes to the bank at closing or to whoever the, the mortgage financer is at closing. Now, just because you want a loan doesn't mean you will qualify a loan for the loan. Whether or not you're going to get your loan depends on how much income you have. We need to talk about the difference between gross monthly income and adjusted monthly income. Your gross monthly income is what you make before deductions. What you make before deductions. So when you look at that first number on your paycheck, that's your gross monthly income. Your adjusted monthly income is that amount, and then I have to subtract any long-term debt payments. 
So I take my gross monthly income and I have to subtract any long-term debt payments. Now, long-term debt versus short-term debt. Long-term debt is um, a debt alone with 10 or more payments left. So if your kid just got braces, then if you are five months, if you're just paying that out over five months, that's fine. That doesn't count against you. But if you decided you're going to need to pay that out over two years, that is a long-term debt. If you have a car loan and you still have a year and a half remaining on your car loan, that is a long-term debt commitment. If you bought some furniture and you still got six months of payments on your furniture, that does not count against you as a long-term debt. So you, when you're figuring out whether or not you qualify for a loan, you take gross monthly income and they're going to subtract the amount of the payments for any long-term debt payments if you have 10 or more payments left. Now what they do with this information is they take your adjusted monthly income and they are going to multiply it times 28%. That's my magic number because in general, no one thinks that you are going to be able to keep up your payments if your housing is much more than a quarter of your income. 25% is a quarter, right? Well, if you are expecting to pay more than 25 to 28% of your income every month toward a house or an apartment, you're not going to have enough money left over for groceries and gas and utilities and clothes and, and things that you have to have and, and entertainment because, you know, we, we've got our phone bills and we've got our internet and things like that. So you, you're not going to get to rent an apartment that's, that's the monthly payment is more than about a quarter of your income. You're not going to get to get a house loan if the monthly payment is going to be more than about a quarter of your income. So 28% of your adjusted monthly income is the maximum they will allow you for a monthly house payment. Now, when they calculate this, they want that monthly house payment to include tax and insurance. So not just the mortgage, principal and interest, but the monthly property taxes and the monthly homeowner's insurance need to be able to fit in with this 28% of your monthly income or you're not going to get approved for the loan. This is how banks and mortgage companies try to ensure that you're not going to default on your loans. Okay, and then we have a reminder, the monthly payment formula. The payment formula that we learned in 10.4 is the same payment formula that we're going to be using to calculate our mortgage payments. We take the principal, which is the amount we borrow, not necessarily the cost of the house, times rate divided by n, where n is 12, because we're making 12 payments a year, and we divide that by 1 minus the quantity, 1 plus r over n, to the negative nt power. Same exact formula as we did in 10.4. We also need to remember the simple interest formula. Remember that from um, 10.2, I believe. Print interest equals principal times rate times time. We're going to use that when we calculate how much of your payment goes to principal and how much goes to interest. Use to calculate, use to calculate how much of your monthly payment goes to principal and how much to interest. So that's when we're going to use our simple interest formula. Okay. Now the next page, we are going to work our way through the process of trying to finance and buy a house from start to finish. Go slowly with this. Make sure you understand the terms. 
and we're gonna we're gonna get it all in and then after we will start breaking it down into smaller pieces okay you find a house you want to buy and it's listed for two hundred sixty five thousand dollars but the sellers agree to a purchase um, price of two hundred forty nine thousand so there is what you've negotiated as the price of the house you are applying for a 30-year mortgage at 7% interest and you're prepared to pay 15% down and two points at closing to get that 7% interest. The first thing we need to do is figure out whether or not you can expect to get the loan for the house. Your gross monthly income is $7,250. You have long-term debt payments on cars. Um, and that's it. So that is needs to be subtracted from your gross monthly income. Now remember I said when I'm, I'm checking to see if I can get a loan, that total monthly payment needs to include tax and insurance. So we're gonna we're gonna look at that as well. But first let's figure out our adjusted monthly income. So to find adjusted monthly income. I will take my gross income minus long-term debt. So for this problem, my gross monthly income is $7,250. I have long-term debt payments. I owe more than 10 months still on cars, and my car payments are $4.45 a month. That means that my adjusted monthly income is $6,805. The bank will loan me up to 28% of that as a total house payment. So if I multiply that by 0.28, because 0.28 tells me what is 28% of $6,805. 0.28 times that comes out to be $1,905.40. That is how much the bank will loan me. That's the maximum total house payment that they will allow me to borrow. And that needs to include tax and insurance on the house, not just principal and interest. So this is the biggest house payment the bank thinks I can handle. Are they going to let me have the loan? Well, to figure out if they're going to let me have the loan, I need to know how much the house payment would be. I know how much my um, tax and insurance is a month. So now I need to know how much my monthly payment would be for principal and interest. Well, they agreed to a price of $249,000. I'm going to pay down 15%, so I'm not borrowing $249,000. Let's figure out how much the down payment is. Well, the down payment is 15% of the sell price of the house. So I am expected to pay $37,350 down to the seller at closing if the loan happens, which means the amount of the mortgage, that mortgage principal that I need to borrow is going to be the sale price of the house minus the down payment. That's the principal that I'm asking to borrow. Let's calculate that payment. Well, my payment formula is principal, which we just figured out, the amount I need to borrow is $211,650 times that ratio of the rate over 12, all over one minus the quantity, one plus that ratio, 
to the negative 12 times, and this is a mortgage. Mortgages are long-term loans. This is a 30-year mortgage. My exponent here is gonna be a negative 360. If I pay the mortgage off as scheduled, I will be making 360 house payments. Now I need to figure out what that house payment would be. We're gonna walk through it one time with our calculator so that you can see it one more time. And then I'm gonna expect you to be able to look back at those steps if you're struggling still with how to use your calculator. In the numerator, I'm going to start with the ratio, 0 0.07 divided by 12, and then I'm gonna multiply that times the amount that I need to borrow, the amount of the mortgage. And I get 1234, 1234.625. So that's nice, I don't have to round. So 1234.625 is my numerator. Now I need to work out my denominator. For my denominator, I start inside the parentheses with the ratio 0 0.07 divided by 12. I need to add one to that because it's in parentheses. And that is what I need to raise to my exponent. My exponent is a negative 360. And I need to subtract that from one to complete my denominator. So I hit one minus Second answer to bring back that decimal. And this is the denominator of my problem, that 0.876, et cetera. All right, I'm gonna key in the numerator, 1234.625 divided by, and I bring that answer back for my denominator, and I get a house payment, principal and interest, of $1,408.11. Okay, so $1,408.11 is the principal and interest house payment, not the total house payment. The total house payment needs to include monthly taxes and insurance. So I need to add to that $475 for tax and insurance, which brings my total house payment to $1,883.11. That is my total payment for principal, interest, tax, and insurance. Do we qualify for the loan? That's the question I'm being asked. Well, yes, we qualify. It's less than that 28% of my adjusted income. So we get to get the loan and we can proceed. All right, now, how much do you need to be prepared to pay at closing? When you come to sign your life away, sign all those documents for the house, how much money do you need to bring? Well, first, we're gonna bring that down payment. We calculated our down payment already. We found 15% of the sell price of the house, and we figured that, okay, that was $37,350 we need to pay down to the seller at closing. Down payment goes to the seller at closing, so I've got to bring that amount. Then I'm also asked to bring points. Um, points, remember, count as interest. And the, the terms of the loan said I would bring two points at closing. So I need to calculate those two points. One point is equal to a percent of what we're asking to borrow. So I need to calculate 2% because I need two points. I need 2% of the mortgage, mortgage, which is the principal that I'm borrowing. So I'm gonna multiply 0 0.02 times that principal, $211,650 is how much I borrowed. So that's what I used to calculate the points. Well, 2% of that comes to $4,233, and that's gonna to go to the bank or to whoever is financing the mortgage at closing. 
The question here is how much do I need to bring to pay at closing? Well, I need to bring that down payment and I need to bring the points. So at closing, I need to be prepared to pay $41,583. I'm not borrowing that, I'm bringing it with me. I'm bringing my down payment and I'm bringing some prepaid interest, those points. Okay, assume that we pay the house off as scheduled. How much is it going to cost me in all if I pay it off as scheduled? Well, my principal and interest payments. How many principal and interest payments am I going to make? It's a 30-year loan, so I'm making 360 payments. And that principal and interest payment amount is $1,408.11. So principal and interest payment total comes out to $506,919.60. That's my P&I payment total. I also had to pay $41,583 at closing. I paid that $37,350 down. That was my down payment. And I paid $4,233 in points at closing. Those were all things that added in to give me the total cost of the house. So when the house is paid for in clear and I have the deed to the house in my name. This is how much it has cost me. $48,502.60. Now remember the selling price of the house, they agreed to take $249. This is more than double that. And you know what? That is common. That is absolutely common. When you pick out a house, be prepared that by the time you finish paying it off, you've paid more than twice what the seller is asking. Now, here is my little disclaimer and my life tip for you. That's if you pay it off as scheduled. Um, we chose to purchase a house that was well within our means instead of at the top of how much we could afford. And because of that, we are able to pay an extra about four to five hundred dollars a month on our house payment. And because of that, we are paying our 30 year loan off 13 years early. So we are saving. Um, I can't remember exactly, but we're saving almost $200,000 worth of interest on our house because we are paying more down on principal each month than we're required. Keep in mind that that is something really, really smart to do. Okay, how much total interest are you going to pay? And don't forget to add in points because that counts as interest as well. Well, to look at total interest, we're going to take that total PMI, the total of our PNI, the total principal and interest payments, this right here, and we need to subtract the principal so that all we have left is interest. Well, my total amount of principal and interest payments was the 506 91960. Out of that, how much was it that I borrowed? Well, I borrowed 211,650. 211,650. That was the, the principal. So that's my total P and I, and that is the principal that I borrowed, the amount of the mortgage that I asked for. The difference there is 295,269,60. And then I need to add points. Remember I paid 233, or excuse me, $4,233 in points. So this is the interest from my principal and interest payments. This is that prepaid interest that was in the form of points at closing. So the total amount of interest paid to buy the house 
was more than the purchase price of the house, the, the sell price of the house, $299,502.60. Okay, last question on this mortgage. Now, a lot of instructors make you do a whole um, amortization table where you look at each payment moving forward to see how much of each payment goes to principal, how much goes to interest. At the beginning, most of what you pay every month applies to interest, not to principal, which is what makes such a huge difference when you're able to pay extra to principal and pay your loan down faster. But as you move forward, a little bit more each time goes toward principal and a little bit less each payment goes toward interest. Let's figure out for the very first payment, how much goes to principal and how much goes to interest. Well, remember that our PMI payment is $1,408.11. That's just principal and interest, not tax and insurance. We're going to use our simple interest formula to calculate how much of this payment goes to principal and how much goes to interest. The cost of our loan, because this is our very first payment, so we still owe $211,650. Our interest rate was 7%. And this is our first monthly payment, so it's only been accumulating interest for one month, which is one-twelfth of a year. Annual rate time and years. When you plug this into your calculator, you discover that of this first $1,438.11, $1,234.63 of it goes to interest. So if I find the difference between these two amounts, how much I pay and how much goes to interest, I see that just $173.48 of that first payment goes to principal. Now if I had you keep going, for the next month you would subtract this $173 from the amount you borrowed and then calculate it again. And then you take that next principal amount, subtract it from how much you borrowed and calculate it again to keep going. Okay, let's look at the next page. Remember, I promised that we were going to break this down into more individual pieces for practice. We're going to do that now. For practice number one, A, B, and C, we have three problems. We're going to work through the first one at least together. And by the third, I'm just going to be giving you answers for you to go through and see if you can work it out on your own. We're going to calculate the adjusted monthly income Find 28% of that to see whether or not they qualify for the loan when you include property tax and homeowner's insurance. Okay, the Gunther's gross monthly income is $3,200, $3,200. They have 25 remaining car payments of $335, so that's a long-term debt. So let's first look at their adjusted income. Adjusted monthly income is going to be that gross monthly income of $3,200 minus their car payment monthly payment cost. That's the only long-term debt they have listed. So that gives me an adjusted monthly income of $2,865. Now to start seeing whether or not they are going to qualify for their loan, I need to say, what's 28% of that? Well, 28% of that would be $802.20. That is the max um, total monthly payment they will be allowed. The house that they are trying to, to buy has a mortgage payment, principal and interest payment of $1186.19. So principal and interest would be $1186.19. Monthly tax and insurance comes to $225. So the total monthly payment they're asking for would be $1,411.19. Do they qualify? 
Well, absolutely not. It's not even close, is it? Um, I have to compare the 28% to that total payment, and they don't come close to qualifying. They're not going to let them get that house. So let's think about the Martins. How's the Martin situation look? The Martins have a gross monthly income of 7,250. They have lots of car payments left, 225 a month. They have several long-term debt for brace payments and 11 remaining payments on furniture. So all three of those things have to be subtracted to get their adjusted monthly income. So let's, cap, uh, let's calculate their adjusted monthly income. We start with the 7,250. We're gonna subtract out their monthly car payment. We're gonna subtract out the monthly braces payment. And we're gonna subtract out their monthly furniture payment, which gives us an adjusted monthly income of $6,805. The bank isn't going to loan them more than 28% of that toward a total house payment. So I find 28% of that adjusted monthly income, and that comes out to be $1,905.40, and that is the max, um, max total monthly payment that the bank will loan. Let's look and see what they're asking for. The mortgage payment that they're asking to qualify for, the PNI payment is $1,408.11, monthly property tax and insurance, property tax is $165, insurance is $115. So I need to add all that together so I get a total house payment every month with tax and insurance would be $1,688.11. When I compare those two amounts, I see that they do qualify. 28% of their adjusted income is more than what they're asking to borrow. What they're asking to borrow would give them a principal and interest payment of 1408, and then we have to include monthly taxes and insurance. I want you guys to do, to do C, to look at the zings, pause the video, work it out, and then see if you were right. Okay, unfortunately the zings do not qualify. If you look at their numbers, their adjusted monthly income comes out to $3,595. When I take 28% of that, I see the bank isn't going to loan them for anything more than a total house payment of $1,006.60. When I talk about principal and interest plus taxes and insurance, they're asking to borrow what would it cost them $2,899.25 a month. That's more than double what they were allowed, so they do not qualify for this loan. If you didn't get all of those values correct, make sure you go back and check and, and see if you can find your mistake. Contact me or one of the math tutors online if you cannot. Okay, okay. let's look at number two. Number two, practice problem two, attacks a different part of this process. Now we're going to calculate the down payment, how much that you need to borrow for the mortgage, the principal that would need to be borrowed, and the amount paid for points, however many points they're being asked. The Martins are buying a house that's selling for $275,000. The bank wants 10% down, and they need to pay a point at closing. So 10% down, my down payment is going to be 10% of the selling price of the house, which comes to $27,500. That's the down payment that is due to the seller at closing. That amount is not being borrowed, not being asked to be borrowed. The amount of the mortgage, the amount of the principal that they would need to borrow is going to be the cost of the house, that $275,000 minus the down payment. So they're asking to borrow 
$247,500. That would be the principal of the mortgage if they qualify. And if this works, they would need to bring one point to closing. One point is 1% 1 of the principal or of the mortgage, which in this case is 1% of 247,500 or $2,475. That is prepaid interest that is due to the bank or to whoever holds the mortgage at closing. So those are the three questions you are answering on B and C. On B, Anna is buying a house selling for $225,000. She needs 15% down payment and must pay three points at closing. So the down payment is calculated as 15% of the cost of the house. That down payment comes to $33,750 due to the seller at closing. The mortgage that she wants to borrow is the difference between the selling price and the down payment. So she is asking to borrow $191,250 and if she gets that, she agrees to pay three points at closing. The three points are 3% of the mortgage, which comes to $5,737.50, and that would go to the bank at closing. Pause your video, work out this, no, C. Answer these three problems for C and then check to see if you got them right. Okay, so here are the values for Tony's condominium. Remember that points are calculated from the mortgage, not from the total cost of the house. Let's look at practice number three. For this problem, we're going to be finding that monthly payment. Remember, the monthly payment is our mortgage payment, principal, and interest. Then we're going to look at the total pay for the house. Remember that the total pay for the house needs to include down payment and points. Oh, no points. Excuse me. The next, the next piece of information tells us that when we calculate interest, we're assuming that for these problems, no points were paid. Let's do the first one together. A couple is making a $24,000 down payment for a $200,000 home, which means they are borrowing $176,000. The cost of the house is financed with a 30-year mortgage at 7%. The first thing we need to calculate is that monthly payment. We're told that they paid the $24,000 down, so what they're borrowing, the principal of the mortgage is $176,000. Interest rate of 7%. And the mortgage, whoops, that shouldn't be an equal sign. The mortgage is a 30-year mortgage. So we have an exponent of negative 360. As you do those calculations, and we're not going to walk through those calculations again, you should come up with a principal and interest house payment of $1,170.93. That's my first answer. The second answer is the total paid on the house. To find that total, we need first the principal and interest total. So we take the number of payments, those 360 payments, assuming it's paid as scheduled, each payment was the same amount. That gives me a principal and interest total of $421,534.80. What else was paid on the house? Well, the house also, they paid um, $24,000 down. which means the total paid for the house was $445,000 or $445,534.80. That was the total paid for the house. 
The third question asks how much interest was paid? Well, to figure out the interest paid, I'm going to take my P&I total, $421,534.80, and I'm going to subtract from that the amount of the principal. Well, the principal is how much I borrowed, so I'm going to subtract the $176,000. And I discover that for this house, this couple paid $245,534.80 total interest. So out of the $445,000 they paid for their house, $245,000 of it was interest. Okay, B, same down payment, same cost house, which means the, the principal is still $176,000. This time, though, they are taking out a 15-year mortgage at 7%. So the only thing changing is the number of payments they're going to be making. When you calculate that principal and interest payment, therefore, the only thing that changes is that you have a 15 here instead of a 30. So set that back up. Your numerator is going to be the same. Your denominator is going to change. Because we're paying off the house faster, that payment, that monthly principal and interest payment, goes up. That's my monthly principal and interest payment. I'm not making as many of those payments. Instead of 360, I'm only making 180 payments because I'm only borrowing the money over 15 years. So that's my P&I total, principal and interest total. If I add in the down payment on this house, $24,000 down. That means the total cost of the house was $308,749.20. That's the total cost of the house. How much insurance did I pay? Not insurance. How much interest did I pay when I cut the loan term from 30 years to 15 years? Well, I take that total P&I, 284, 749, 20, and I subtract the amount we borrowed, 176,000, and I see that this time I cut the interest more than in half. I cut the term in half, but I also cut the interest more than in half. And how much did my payment go up? Look at that. The payment didn't go up, but just about $400 a month. Not huge increase in payment when I cut the term of the loan in half. I want you to pause the video and I want you to calculate the three answers on C. Still borrowing the same amount, doesn't say anything about a down payment, so assume no down payment as well as no points. 15-year mortgage, 9% interest rate. Pause your video, work it out, and then come back and check. For this one, the payment should come out to be $1,785.11. Principal and interest total is the total pay for the house, since it doesn't say anything about a down payment or points. And that means the amount of interest is this principal and interest minus the principal borrowed for $145,319.80 worth of interest. Let's look at the next page and tackle a different aspect of our mortgage problems. For each of these problems, we're going to find several things. The down payment, the amount of the mortgage, which is our principal we're borrowing, the cost of points, however many points it asks for, how much the monthly payment would be, the total I paid on the house, and how much of that total was interest. And remember that interest comes from points and from the principal and interest payments. 
Now, I'm not going to show all of the calculations. I'm just going to talk through them. The condominium, the selling price is 180000 and the bank wants 5% down. So that is our required down payment. The down payment for this house is 5% of the selling cost, 180000 which makes me have a $9,000 down payment. Then I see how much I'm going to borrow for the house. How much I'm going to borrow is the amount I need on the mortgage. The amount of the mortgage is going to be the selling price minus that down payment. So I only need to borrow $171,000. The points, in this case a single point, are, is calculated from that mortgage amount. So if I'm going to borrow $171,000, 1% of that is $1,710. That's the prepaid interest. Then I need to calculate my monthly payment. That monthly payment of just principal and interest, because I didn't give you any information on taxes and insurance. I'm going to use the payment formula. I'm borrowing $171,000 at 8% for 30 years. So I'm borrowing that amount for 30 years at 8%. I plug that into my payment formula and I figure out that my monthly payment for principal and interest is $1,254.74. Next I need to know how much will that P&I add up to, that principal and interest payment, how much will be that total be over 30 years? Well, for 30 years, I will be making 360 payments if I pay it off as scheduled, which gives me a total principal and interest payment of $451,706.40. To get the total paid for the house, I need to take that, I need to add in my down payment, And I need to add in the amount I paid for points. And I get $462,416.40 is the total cost of the house. I was asked one more thing. I was asked how much interest was paid. Well, the interest paid, interest paid is going to be points right there, plus the amount of this less the mortgage. So I'm going to take the $451,000 amount, subtract the amount I borrowed, the one seventy one, dollars and that gives me two eighty seven oh six. 40, add in the points, or point, and that gives me $281,416.40 of interest paid. So the total cost of the house to me was, or the condo, was $462,416.40, and out of that amount, $281,000 of it was interest, if it's paid off as scheduled. Okay, I want you to pause the video, work through the second problem, where the price of the home is $160,000, and then come back to check and see if you got it right. All right, here are the values you should have gotten on B. The down payment is calculated as 15% of the selling price. The mortgage is how much you need to borrow after making that down payment. Two points are 2% of the mortgage. My payment 
formula, my monthly payment formula, gives me a monthly payment for principal and interest of $1,222.41. It's a 15-year mortgage, so I'm making 180 payments, 15 times 12, times that. That gives me the total principal and interest payments. To calculate the cost of the house, I take that total and I add in the down payment and the points. To get the total interest, I take the total P&I, I subtract the mortgage, and then I add in those points of interest. Our last um, mortgage practice, practice page five, works through the Rivera's home. Um, it's from start to finish determining whether or not they're going to qualify for the home and what the final cost of the home will be. I am going to pause the video, write down amounts. We're not going to talk through it at all. If you get stumped on this, if you can't work it out on your own, then I encourage you to contact me or a tutor to work through that. Some things to note about this. When you're told the total of the taxes and insurance, you're given the yearly amounts per year, per year. So I have to divide each of those by 12 to find out how much a month taxes will be and how much a month insurance will be. I discovered that my down payment is 110,000, three points based on the mortgage. So once I calculate the down payment, I figure out how much I would need to borrow. And then three points is 3% of that mortgage amount. It's this mortgage amount that I use to calculate my monthly principal and interest payment. And then I take my monthly principal and interest payment, add in monthly costs for tax and insurance, property tax and insurance, to get the total monthly payment. When I figure out whether or not they qualify for the loan, I have to calculate their adjusted monthly income by subtracting out those long-term debt payments, take 28% of that, and then I compare it to the total monthly payment with taxes and insurance. They do qualify for the loan. Their first payment, when I'm calculating their first payment to see how much goes to principal, how much goes to interest, I it's just one, one month, so the term is one twelfth. $2,016.67 goes to interest, and I subtract that amount from their principal and interest payment to figure out how much of that will go to count down on the principal of the loan. Our last page, our last set of practice problems are for student loans instead of mortgages. So they're a little quicker, a little more straightforward. We'll do the first one together and then I'll give you the answers for the second. First, we're gonna calculate the monthly payment, then the total cost of the loan, and how much of that first payment is applied to principal. The first student graduates with a loan debt of 50,000. They have an interest rate of 4% and they have 20 years to pay off their loan. Well, the monthly payment formula is the same no matter what type of fixed loan we're, we're making. So we have our principal times the rate over 12 because there are 12 payments a year. And our denominator is one minus that quantity raised to the negative 12 and then the term of the loan. So 12 times 20 is going to be 240 payments. My exponent is a negative 240. When I do this calculation in my calculator, I get a repeating decimal in my numerator. I get that, de that fractional de or decimal denominator. I come up with a monthly loan payment of $302.99 for my student loans. Then to figure out the total cost of that loan, I don't have points or down payment or anything else. I just see how many payments I made. If I pay it as scheduled, I'm making 240 payments, and every month my payment is $302.99. So that comes to a total of $72,717.60 to pay back my $50,000 worth of loan. 
When I look to see how much of that first payment is applied to the principal, remember we're using the simple interest formula to calculate that. I borrowed $50,000 at a rate of 4%, and my term, because it's the first monthly payment, is just 1 12th of a year or one month. So out of that $302.99, the first month, $166.67 of it goes to interest, which means when I find the difference, I subtract the interest from that total payment amount. For the first payment, only $136 goes to principal, which shows again why you can pay it down a lot faster if you're paying more straight to principal. Pause your video, work out for the next student, and then see if you got things correct. For this problem, the student graduates with only $24,000 worth of loans. They have an interest rate of 8%, so double the interest rate, same term of the loan, 20 years. Even though the, they borrowed half the amount with double the interest, <laughs> you can see that they end up paying back um, $48,180. They have monthly payments of $200.75. For that very first monthly payment, 160 of it is going to go to interest. So almost all of that first payment goes to interest, a little bit to principal. As you pay the principal down, that balance starts to shift. So the faster you can pay the principal down, anytime you can apply more each month to principal than is necessary, the better off you are.